Hey everyone, uh, my name is Calvin and welcome to my video tutorial for Watercolor Portrait Press. In this video we're going to make two different projects. Uh, in the first part we're going to make a normal watercolor portrait like this one and then later on I'm going to show you some of the other options of this effect uh, and we're going to make a, a watercolor painting of a leopard like this one. So the first thing you'll do to get started is just download the product folder. It's a zip file. Go ahead and unzip it and inside you'll find uh, one folder and then these two files. Uh, this folder has some optional stuff in it and uh, the main thing in there is going to be a kind of an image scaler tool and uh, I'll link the tutorial to how to use this uh, in the description of this video. Uh, this readme here is what's going to contain links to this uh, tutorial video as well as my email address just in case you have any questions. And uh, this last one here, this Photoshop document, this is the effect itself. Uh, and to uh, open up the effect, just drag it into Photoshop. So when you open up that Photoshop document, it'll look just like this. And uh, this effect has a lot of options. And to navigate those options, you'll need the Layers panel. And you can find that under Window and then Layers. Uh, this effect has this sort of default image uh, loaded in. And to place your own image, uh, just open up this smart object up here and you can open that up by double clicking on this little uh, page icon down here. Now when I open up the smart object it'll actually open a new document tab. So here's the original uh, document here. When I double click that smart object it opened up a new tab. Uh, we'll make our changes here uh, and then close and save this tab to apply the effect. So before I drop in my own image I'm gonna hide this uh, default image and then just drag my image in and uh, it's pretty small, so I'm going to scale it up to fill the artboard a little bit more. And uh, this effect comes with some optional masks, but if you want to change the shape of this from a square to a more natural shape, you can just erase it. Uh, but I'm going to use these masks here. So make sure that's uh, on, and then I'm going to turn on the uh, mask number two here. And uh, you can scale these and change these just like any other object or layer in Photoshop. So I'll just click the layer, and then I'll do Control T. I think for a Mac it's Command T, uh, but you can kind of stretch this mask uh, to sort of get a little bit more of your image in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll press Enter. And then uh, I'm happy with the mask. I'm happy with the uh, image placement here. So I'll close and save this smart object to apply the effect. And uh, this effect could take anywhere from one to three minutes to apply. For this video, though, I'll fast forward it. So here's the effect after it's been applied to the image. Uh, you can see right away that the eyes and the nose and the mouth are a little bit blurry uh, than they should be. Uh, so this effect allows you to sharpen those areas up. And you can do that by selecting the detail mask down here. Uh, just make sure that that little white box is highlighted. Uh, and then you can grab the brush tool. And make sure the hardness is set pretty low. And uh, make sure the color is set to totally pure black. And now wherever you draw, it'll kind of cut through that and uh, allow a more sharper effect to show through. So it depends on your image, but I like to sharpen a little bit of the mouth, a little bit of the nose, um, but make sure the eyes are completely sharpened. And I'll also sharpen this kind of hair here a little bit. Maybe a little detail down there. There, and that looks pretty good. This effect offers a lot of other options relating to color and pencil sketching and even kind of a gold uh, foil effect. Um, these are all uh, optional and they're pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go over a few of the most important ones. So I think for this uh, picture here, I want to make it a little more vibrant uh, and I'll also warm up the colors a little bit. Um, down here, you can control the splatters and the wash and the grain. Uh, the splatters are these kind of ink dots, uh, kind of scattered everywhere. Uh, if you want to lower the uh, kind of strength of that, you can just lower the opacity. Uh, if you want to make it stronger, you can raise it up. Depends on your image. It depends on what you're trying to go for. Uh, same with the grain and the wash texture. Um, the paper texture is up here. It's the paper texture on the effect itself, not in the background. Uh, that's down here, and you can turn that off if you want. Um, but for different images, you'll find that the paper texture needs to be set at different strengths. So for this image, I think the paper texture should be on. It looks pretty nice. Uh, and while it's selected, I'll lower the opacity to kind of make it just a little bit lighter, maybe around 30%. And uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, this effect comes with this Gold Pro option, uh, and that's a little complicated. It basically allows you to apply a kind of a gold look to this. 
Uh, and there's a separate tutorial for that, and I'll link that in the description of this video just in case you're curious about how to use that one. So I'm pretty happy with this result, and you can export it like any other image in Photoshop uh, using the Save for Web dialog, for example. It has this paper texture background. If you're planning on printing this out, um, I recommend that you turn that off. Uh, you could turn that off by just uh, toggling the visibility of that last folder there. And uh, when it's turned off, it shouldn't affect the texture of the uh, watercolor effect itself. It'll just disable the, the uh, paper texture from the background. And then you can go to File, uh, Save for Web, and uh, export it uh, just like this. So I've closed the other project and reopened the uh, watercolor effect to start again. And uh, I'll open up that smart object just like before. And uh, I'll hide the default image and uh, place in my leopard image. Uh, this one right here. It's another pretty small image. Just like that. And uh, this image has a lot of white in it. And uh, it'll show you some of the issues that can happen with the uh, sketching options. And uh, I'll show you how to resolve those. So I think this scale is pretty good. I'll press enter to get out of that uh, transform mode. Um, I want to use one of the masks. I think maybe that mask. And uh, I'll click it and scale it again using the uh, control T or command T option. And uh, I'll just kind of catch a little bit more of the image there. That looks good. I'll scale the leopard a little bit more. There we go. OK, Enter. And uh, I'll close and save the smart object to apply the effect. And uh, I'll speed up the uh, loading again just for the sake of the video. So uh, here's the result. It looks pretty good. And uh, I'll zoom in here to get a closer look. So I'll sharpen around the uh, eyes and the nose and the ears a little bit. So I'll do the same thing as before. I'll select that detail mask, uh, grab the brush tool, and make sure it's on black, and uh, make sure the hardness is pretty low. And then I'll just kind of draw around the eyes, just a little bit around the nose there, maybe around the whiskers a little bit, and uh, the ears. Now the issue with the pencil effect is Sometimes if there's areas where there's a lot of dark and light together, it'll get a little bit crazy and put lines and pencil sketching just everywhere. And uh, you can clear that up. The first thing you want to do, though, is find out which pencil sketch is causing it. Uh, so this one is um, the outline. Uh, so if I turn that off. But in certain cases where there's a lot of uh, contrast, the outline will actually get in here and start to outline some of these white highlights. Uh, so this one seems to be the problem uh, pencil outline there. So I'll turn it on, and I'm going to mask it, and then erase uh, the areas where I don't want the pencil sketch effect to show up. So I'll click that pencil, pencil outline uh, folder there, and uh, I'll make a mask on it, clicking this button down here. And uh, it looks a lot like this one, same basic concept. Uh, just click that mask. And now wherever you draw, as long as you have the brush tool with the black, uh, wherever you draw is where it will hide uh, that pencil sketching effect. So you can kind of go over your image and look for areas where the pencil sketch is kind of doing it wrong uh, and just kind of cover those areas up. And that looks pretty good. Uh, usually the pencil sketch effect that causes this is the first one, but sometimes the second one can cause it too, and the process for dealing with that is exactly the same. So this looks pretty good. I don't think I need to do any color options here. Uh, I'll just hide the background and uh, export it uh, using the Save for Web dialog just like before. So hopefully this is a pretty good overview about how you can use this effect to create some pretty cool watercolor images from photos. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave me a message or send me an email and uh, I'll get right back to you. But uh, other than that, guys, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.